Well, I've been passionate about the environment. Uh, as a kid, I grew up loving wild spaces and spending lots of time outdoors. But then at the same time, also see some wild spaces that I particularly loved bulldozed over. So I've always been passionate about the environment and wanting to look at different forms of activism. I eventually landed full-time working for Pembina, where I've been now for about the last eight years. The Pembina Institute is a national environmental group that works on clean energy. And we advance clean energy solutions through research, advocacy, education, and consulting. I'm supported by a wonderful partner named Yuka. We've been married for 12 years now. And then I've got these two wonderful kids, both of whom give me so much joy in seeing how they develop and, you know, even starting to understand a little bit more about this kind of wacky career path that I've taken. For me, the ultimate goal is similar to Pemina's tagline, and I want to help lead Canada's transition to a clean energy future. Call me a geek, but that's what gets me up in the morning. So as the head of Pembina, I'm also partly a, a strategist. What issues are we going to work on? What is our theory of change? What kind of uh, impact or mark are we trying to leave on the world? And then ultimately, how do we resource that? You know, we might just, between now and 2015, the next federal election, just unabashedly embrace it that we're going to try to budge uh, provincial policy and try to hold the line on federal policy. So I am meeting with uh, a gentleman by the name of Peter Zimmerman, who is an environmental manager with the energy company ConocoPhillips Canada. And Peter is a great guy. He's one of those terrific environmental champions that you have working in a business that needs more environmental champions. But then he's also going to give me uh, feedback on a recent report that Pemina put out that frankly calls into question uh, we think some of the inaccuracies that are being portrayed by the oil and gas industry uh, around uh, performance in the oil sands. So I'm sure that uh, he's going to have a response for me on where we got it right, but I think more importantly, where we got it wrong as well. So this is the fun part. When the guy in the suit gets to put on his bright yellow pants because he's going to bike downtown to attend a couple events with the oil and gas industry. Biking is a nice way of building in just a little bit of exercise into a job that has me sitting down and indoors a lot. And then of course I couldn't be doing the job I'm doing and not think about the environmental benefits to frankly leaving a car uh, at the office here. Peter. Hi Ed. Nice How are you? See you? Sorry to keep you waiting. No problem. Yeah. Thanks for taking time. Too. My pleasure. Come. So you can see I'm all suited up and I'm about to go make the rounds at the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers Responsible Canadian Energy Awards Banquet. It's a strange event for uh, a guy like me to attend. I'm a professional environmentalist. But on the other hand, you can look at it as me being on the inside and getting access to deputy ministers, ministers, perhaps even the premier, CEOs, the head of the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers is something that's useful for a group like ours that aims to influence influencers on our issues to do with clean energy. So there's value in being there just for that alone. I'm, you know, part manager in that working with colleagues and in particularly my managing director, I need to make sure that the Pemina trains run on time. And so I need to make sure that we're bringing the, the right people into the organization, that we're managing our budget, that we've got uh, HR policies that are attractive to try to attract and retain the best and brightest. So that's part of what I do. We're 50 people strong. Uh, we've got seven offices around Canada. And the value of me is not sitting behind a computer and doing lots of email. It's being out and engaging with people within our network. And then from there, we can establish, I think, some common values. Once you have the common values set, then you can actually get to issues and sit down and have a civilized conversation. 
Once again, the transformation into corporate man. Here I sit in a Good Earth Cafe, watching our federal finance minister table the budget. I'm going to try to listen to what he says. At the same time, I'm going to be working with our staff, one of whom has been in the budget lockup all day in Ottawa and just got sprung 20 minutes ago to try to craft the permanent response to it. So you can see we've got seven people on the Skype chat, all of whom pretty much are located in, in different parts of the country. And I've got the next hour to do my part, which essentially is signing off on the final draft before we sent this out. No one I know in industry gets up in the morning and thinks of new and inventive ways to destroy the environment. No one. And just like no one I know working for an environmental group gets up in the morning and thinks of new and inventive ways to destroy jobs. And they say, all right, let's put our differences aside. Um, let's agree to disagree. And if that means compartmentalizing a disagreement over here, we will, in order to ensure that the good work we're doing over here can still happen. Personally, my day isn't over yet. But fortunately, uh, I'm going to go have a dinner uh, that's going to involve a couple senior civil servants uh, the head of an industry association, a couple of uh, senior executives with energy companies, uh, and a couple others to talk about oil sands issues. And in essence, can we get to a better place right now in the debate? After that dinner, then my day is over. being on the road away from family like I am you know, over these two days. And then Jukas left uh, minding the house and taking care of our two kids. And that's a, you know, uh, that's, that's a, a, a real, you know, tough job in, in and of itself. Hi, honey. Uh, I know it's late. It's me calling. It's uh, just about quarter after 10 on Thursday. Uh, sorry to miss you guys tonight. Uh, great to speak with you this morning. It's been a long couple days. Uh, I'm gonna be home pretty much first thing tomorrow morning. I love you, uh, I miss you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, bye. If I'm part manager, part diplomat, part communicator, part facilitator, part banker and fundraiser, you know, did I touch upon those? Did I make some sort of meaningful contribution in those realms? The ability to combine all those, that's part of my role. And so if I've hit upon them, I've had a good day. You can't point to a big landmark decision and say, I made that happen today, a big environmental win. But you can point to little incremental gains. Maybe it's an article of faith, but I think they're gonna to lead to something.